What's up, After Buzzers? We're back talking Good Girls Revolt, episodes seven and eight, and we have a very guest with us, so stay tuned. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. Good morning. Oh, yeah. This is the jam. <laughs> I love I love this like time period. I love it. The music, everything is so great. What's up everyone? We are back and we are talking Good Girls Revolt, episodes seven and eight, Puff Piece and Expose. And they were great. Another great couple episodes. Really good. And we only really have good. one week left. It's crazy. Ah! I am your host, Abby Vega. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at underscore Abby Vega. And where can they find you? Hey everyone, I'm Marissa Serafini. You can follow me on Twitter at Serafini TV. Hey guys, I'm Tara Erickson. You can find me on Twitter at the Tara Erickson. And we have a very special guest oh. from the show, oh. Oh. Reggie. Where can they find you? Uh, at Reggie Watkins Jr. on Twitter. Say what's up to me. I like talking. Good Girls Revolt too. I love it. It's my favorite. Thanks so much for coming yes. in. I'm, thank you for having me. I appreciate I'm so it. excited. Not yeah. only because you're on the show, but just I think it's gonna be great to have like a male's perspective when we talk. Totally. You guys haven't had a male's perspective. No, yet? Oh. You're the first Reggie. Well, I gotta represent for the fellas then. Okay, yeah. Yeah. All right, I can do that. I think it'll be awesome <laughs> to right. have yeah. you know, like a different look of things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so let's just dive in. These episodes, we were talking about this. Me and you were. And then we were last week, how each week it's really just like picking up. Yeah. Yes. And there's just more action, more stories. It's drama. It's getting so good. <laughs> yes. I so love good. it. Um, so I have to talk, say first, my prediction was right. I, it was. I knew it was going to be Doug that was knocking on her door. We were, oh, <laughs> yeah. Were was, you guys all yeah. worried about that? I knew it was going to be Doug. So she, sure. she was thinking it was going to be Finn. I, you know what? Me and me and my girl, we've been binge, you know, yeah. we, we watched it, binge watching it. And... When we got when we heard that knock, we were so scared. Like I <laughs> did not, I didn't want it to be Finn. Like I didn't want it to be Finn, but I was like, uh, if it is, see, I wanted Finn. Yeah, well, well, I just didn't want Finn. You know what I mean, I didn't want him to cheat on his wife. I know, yeah, and, yeah. You know what I mean, I wanted it to be. I'm glad it was Doug. I'm glad it was. Doug. I, I yeah. just knew it. I thought that the way they set it up, it was way too like perfect for it to be Finn. Yeah. And I'm like, that's what I think that they're, you know, avoid. Like yeah. avoiding that, yeah. Because I, I think we've all been talking about that. There's definitely some weird little thing happening between F Patty and Finn. Yes. Yeah. But I thought it was maybe too soon for them to do it. I th and I think they wanted to kind of trick us a little bit. Oh, I agree. Because that was at the end of seven, right? At the yeah. end of six. At the end, end of six. 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 Okay. Oh, right. He drops the off the limo. Then he's yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. Got it. And yes. And I'm kind of happy about the Patty and Doug thing because the last couple episodes they were working so well together, and I was wondering if they were gonna re re spark anything, and yeah. we weren't so sure. But They're back. Yeah. 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 And you know what? And like not to jump ahead, I think it might be good the second time around because now it's helping in the workplace too. Yeah. Because that's where they couldn't get their oh, yeah. agreeing. Well, yeah. together. We'll have to dive right. into that for they sure. They have their groove back. <laughs> yeah. So meanwhile, after we see Doug and Patty having like almost honeymoon-like behavior, and uh -huh. they're like rekindling, totally. like, we go to Lenny and Cindy. Oh, oh man. And wow. Rod is, <laughs> man. Like, what is there to girl. say? And I mean, he clearly is a little catching on to her being a little different. Yes. But also just... Just the real establishment of Lenny. We've seen him a couple times, but not mm -hmm. really who yeah. he is. But he's giving her, you know, demands like, "Will Will you make me a sandwich when I come right. home?" Yeah. Like, oh, come on, butter and pastrami you. sandwiches at that. <laughs> yeah, you right. She had to put butter on the the meat and bread. Very yeah, and then yeah. like him even telling her, "You can't wear this dress to the party, right. but I'm gonna wear my sports coat." What is such a double standard? Yeah. I'm like, I, I don't like you, Lenny. <laughs> I don't like him either. It's weird though that he's like, "You're different." He takes a pause as though they're going to get into an intimate conversation. Conversation, and he's like, "Hey, can you whip me up some pancakes or whatever he says?" Yeah, uh, it's just I don't know. Yeah, I, I dislike him too very much. Yeah, I dislike him, but me and uh, now this is the the male no, perspective yeah, yeah. Here because uh -huh. my girl is so you know I mean she's like, "Oh, I hate him. He's the worst," and you know and like. I, you know, we're jump, I'm not going to jump ahead because, okay. you know, we, we're we'll, going to we'll talk, talk about, about this. It. Okay, cool. we'll, we'll get to that. Uh, right. Then, you know, the last of our three girls, I, I have to say again, I love how that with the last few episodes they open up and they do quick little scenes with three main girls and it kind of sets up what their story is going to be for the entire episode. Totally. And I love how they do that. Because yeah. then you see Jane talking to her dad. Mm -hmm. And I kind of feel bad for her. Like, 
in the family situation, I feel like she's so expected to be a certain way. He's talking about her wanting to get a different job because there's more eligible men at a law yeah. firm. It's just, it's crazy. It more sucks. accessible men. Acceptable. Yeah. That, that is so crazy to, to see, too, and, and think about as a as a man, you you never really think about that. You know what I mean? Like, and especially for it to be in that time period that this is what was part of their daily life. This is what their life was supposed to be like. You know, you go to a job and you go somewhere where hopefully there's a guy you could end up marrying yeah. and have kids with right. and he'll take care of the family. You just stay home. It's crazy. It's right. So Wherever crazy. a guy goes, there's eligible women yeah. to marry. It, he right. never had to think about never it. Never had to think about and, it. Yeah. That's it's, so... It's so crazy to think mm -hmm. about. It that. is nuts. Yeah. It's also just showing like how much the family has influence on her career. Yeah, yeah. really, not and just her as a woman, just her decision in yeah. workplace. And then think about that multiplied by every woman in the country at that time, and not just mm -hmm. the country, the world, yeah. pretty much. That's just mind blowing. It's yeah, pretty nuts. Yeah. Um, I like this quote that Patty says. Like, I'm 25 today, and I'm going to make my take myself more seriously. And I mm -hmm. think this actually um, captured her pretty well, because since that whole incident on New Year's, yeah. mm -hmm. I actually, in these two episodes, did notice her being a little more mature and, like, focused. Mm -hmm. And what did you guys think? No, I completely noticed it, too. I was like, she hasn't done one, like, reckless thing. Mm -hmm. And yeah. when she, she was actually being a good friend to Cindy in certain times. So I was she like, was. okay, she's being that good friend that she promised she would have been earlier. Yeah. And she wasn't, and now she was in these episodes. And I'm yeah. like, all right, maybe she is turning a new leaf. Yeah. I, I think, I mean, she, she was more assertive, definitely more assertive, and just... You could see her getting hungrier for, you know, trying to get a story and really get out there and mm -hmm. write a story. Like, I think she's evolving. This character is evolving so much in these last couple of episodes. Yeah. It's really cool. And then we have, so then we finally have the meeting uh, where the girls find out about the salary difference. Mm -hmm. And Patty says, you know, that they're ma pretty much the guys are making three times as much. And then it also leads into, I thought this was like the ringer. Eleanor's like, yeah, you guys can't be sleeping with these guys and pretty much says that these guys are going to hate them and that they're the enemy. And clearly this is an issue because I'm pretty sure all of them are like intermingling. They're all in a twine <laughs> yeah, with those yeah, dudes. Yeah. 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 Well, it's true. But like even her argument it was a good case. She's like, it will give you discredit and it's pretty much conflict of interest as well. Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. Like, Absolutely. I mean, that's the first thing that they could say, well, you know, I mean, how much do you really hate being here? You're mm -hmm. hanging out with us privately. You know yeah, what I mean? no, like, exactly. But I think that that brings up to where career woman around there is like such a weird term for them mm -hmm. where they're like, no, I'm just here to work and hopefully I'll find a guy to like, then I'll take care of him. So at the same time, it's sort of like, yeah, I, I get it. Like you'd sleep with your boss if you don't actually want to be in the pit forever and end up like, I forget what her name uh, was. Yeah, I, and you want to get married yeah. and you want to have kids, right? Like back in the day, that's kind of was their path. It yeah. wasn't a career path. Career path was like looked down upon. So I'm not surprised that you would be like, I'm also with a boss. Yeah, yeah. and it seems <laughs> like I think I think a lot of these girls are gonna have issues because they yeah. right now they're saying that they want these careers and stuff but then when it comes down to it they, yeah. they're all questioning wait but I st they want to yeah, be yeah. with these men because I mean right. they're human they yeah. still want they this feelings. compassion they want you know partnership and yeah. and that's gonna go I mean but it, that's why the show's so good it is. Yeah. I mean yeah. you get to see the struggle of like human wants and desires but also the same desires of wanting a career and wanting to be equal it's yeah because yeah, at it, the end of the day you should have both yeah because yeah, it'd be crazy and it would not be realistic at all if right after eleanor says that they're like okay bye guys bye right. boys, because they've been exactly. part of their lives for mm -hmm. so long and they have so many emotions invested so it wouldn't be realistic so it is i think very good that they're showing the struggle of that yeah. i agree yeah i'm like in uh, I, I like the one simple line that Eleanor had, like, injustice hurts, especially yeah. learning from the salaries, which is three times as much, which is sickening because I'm just throwing myself in there. Like, I work in an environment where I'm literally surrounded by guys all day, mm -hmm. and I would be hurt if I got paid less than them. Yeah. So and it's like, and just take it back to the 60s when this actually really did happen. Yeah. And it's still happening. Yeah. It's, it's just... I, I felt for the girls at this time. Like, no, I wouldn't want to sleep with them either, knowing how much they were making. I know, right? It's, like, sickening to think, like, they can go home and afford all these, like, luxuries, and then 
like the ladies are doing all of the they groundwork. They are working. Yeah. They're working, working hard. hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the yeah. salaries, did you hear the salaries? 21000 I know, we were like, like we were I listening, I'm like, what are you buying with 21000 yeah. like, But you, know, you think about it, yeah. back in the day, 21000 was like, I'm balling. So in yeah. my head, I was Red like, was so like is she cents. making $7,000 <laughs> a year? Yep. Yeah. Right? Yep. Yeah. That, all the women were. Another reason I love that And they're living in New York? I know. That's another reason why I love this show. It's like, you learn so much about how it was. Whoa, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, so Eleanor says something to Cindy about it being dangerous uh, that she snuck in, which I thank goodness she said something because oh, that yeah. sparked in her head. She left the salary sheet in the copy machine. And yeah. the drink. And the drink. And the drink right next to it, yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. She finishes off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, oh, Cindy you, has a drinking problem. Yeah, what do you guys think yeah. about that? I mean, what do you guys think about that? Because I, I, we're watching and we're like, God, why is she? She's a lush. Why is she drinking so much? I, so much. I know. It's interesting because I, in my head, I don't know. Just because we don't have as much of the backstory, I don't know if she just never really had her time to, like, do all that stuff and now that she's in this crazy whirlwind of like an affair and doing revolting and all this yeah and she's just getting i don't know yeah i don't know what to think of it really i don't really think it's like the age where she didn't have time to party and enjoy life i think it's more so all these added factors that she's in in her life is just stressing her out where she's it's causing her her to drink her way to get away yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah. because we obviously know she's not happy in her love life and her home Mm -hmm. life and she's not happy at work so maybe is the only thing that gets her happy She's yeah. happy in that alleyway. Oh, yeah, that's what I've written down. <laughs> Alley sex. They went, Cindy they, and Ned. They went there. They went Woo! in. They, they did they it. They went in. They went hard yeah. with it. So, <laughs> yeah. so, so Ned, Ned and Cindy, Cindy is, Cindy like prowls around for him. She literally totally. is like, She's that? like, where is he? And I'm like, dude, Cindy, you, she's gotta, thirsty. you need a comment. She's clean. She's yeah, she's comment, she's girl. Clean. I mean, we'll talk way more about it in yeah. the next episode yeah, because I was like, kind of heartbroken for her. But yeah, they have some fun in the alley. Yeah, they do. And then we go over to Finn and, Finn, Finn, Finn and Gregory, <laughs> which I love their dynamic. I said yeah. I was going to like kind of having the new like younger hip guy as the editor totally. instead of Wick. Um, mm-hmm. And they ditch out to go to a party. Totally, they yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, they're in. They're on. They're in New York. New York. Yeah, yeah. I'm <laughs> thinking about it. They're in Malibu. <laughs> they look like Malibu. They did. <laughs> but they're in New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, the- I I like that that scene, and I kind of like seeing Finn stay true to you himself. know. I'm not going to you know. I'm about my wife, yes. and I'm not that kind of guy. And but you also still see him struggling yes. a little he bit does. with yeah. the but patty thing. Did you guys notice? I, I know you. I I mean, it comes up more, but right. Uh, when they're about to leave for the party, I immediately noticed Gregory giving a little look when Finn went to go say something to Patty. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. I'm like, he's on to him. Yeah, you can see, you know, you could see that he was going to know what was going on and see that there was some tension going on. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Because he brought it up at later, the party. right? Or yeah. a different day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He brought totally. it up at the party. Um, uh, so, does it, I'm confused. Does Gregory have a wife? I think he or does. A girl. I think because remember they were talking about yeah, yeah. the, He's like, the I'm tied summer down. with Bonnie. I think his, her name okay. was Bonnie. I think I caught that. Bonnie. Oh yeah, at the Bonnie. beach. So yeah, the they beach. were reminiscing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. So that's why I Greg Gregory. I like him in as the dynamic in the workplace, but he's a little bad news. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's he's, he's a wild card yeah. man. Yeah. He's, he's doing trying whatever to, like, he wants. Pers- like try to like persuade Finn to kind of be doing come that. Come to the come to the wild yeah. side. Yeah. He's that like corporate guy that you think of like has a lot of money, can do whatever he wants, wants and that's what he does where mm-hmm. it's in my head, it's like, yeah, I guess that's what most guys do in like corporate world. When you have a lot of money, so, they just are like, whatever, I can do whatever I want. Which I don't want to think that, that way, but, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to think that way, but I do. So then, in regards to, so obviously Patty's having like this dinner party for her twenty fifth birthday, and mm-hmm. she's inviting everyone. And but Jane has to go on like this job interview. Did you guys notice how bummed she looked that she wasn't going when she found out Sam was going? Or was that just me making things up oh, in my no. head? She, yeah. No, she was totally bummed. Yeah, right? absolutely. You know she yeah. didn't want to... Uh, she was already begrudgingly going uh-huh. to this meeting with her father. And now knowing that like there's a party going on, she's just going to miss out. Did you think... Now, did you guys think that it was she was sad or like upset that Sam was going and she wasn't going? That's or was it I just thought. that it was another person going... And she wasn't really invited in the first place. See, I took it as Sam because I felt like I noticed this. um, Because she was definitely, because when Patty invited her a couple times, she put on that whole like, no, I have other engagements, whatever. But then right when Sam said something, she got this like look. And I think that's kind of what changed her mind. That's Mm -hmm. how I took it. Hmm. I agree. Because he knows at this point, right? 
that they that they're broken her, up. That they're yeah. broken up, oh, yeah. right? Because she told him at that. I get so the episodes so confused. I know sometimes. when you do two episodes, it's hard too. Yeah, she told him in seven, right? Or was it six? six. She told him six. six that they Where broke they up. Oh, that's yeah. right. And they would get in the mail. Yes, 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 totally. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So oh, I, yeah. I told it. I got it as the fact that he was going kind of changed her mind. But mm. I, I don't know. I could mm. be wrong. Mm. <laughs> um, so I, I don't know when this happened, but Cindy and Patty had this this little moment that I thought was significant to talk about. When, you know, she kind of says that she had sex with two men that day and all this stuff. And Uh Patty's like, do you ever consider leaving him? And I thought it was Cindy saying, I wouldn't know how to. I thought that was very interesting. Yeah. I mean, she wouldn't. I mean, he makes, she makes money, but it's like, yeah, living in New York, like, how would you get away? Where would you stay? Like, your whole life would be so messed up. And, like, who wants to go and live with their parents at 25 and, yeah. like, after you've been married and you're divorced yeah. and it's looked down upon at the time to get a divorce? It's just rough city, man. Yeah, and, I get it. Yeah. You know, and, and if that's been your... That's what you've known. You know, yeah. that's what your your sisters have done, your neighbors have done. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, how could you step out and take that kind of leap I mean that'd be so frightening for yeah. somebody even if yeah. you know mm-hmm. even even the fact that she is messing around with somebody else it still is the comfort of normalcy for mm-hmm. what yep. the time was yeah you know? and I think that just the character of Cindy herself it seems like she's a person who's never really done anything by herself like yeah. she's not truly independent yeah. I mean she went from her home to a job but like she pretty much just got married right away so mm-hmm. like she's had her whole life living with someone else who could ta- also take care of her mm-hmm. other than herself and I think she's just afraid at the fact that she doesn't know how to survive by herself yeah, yeah. and I feel like right now too with I feel like <laughs> Cindy like we said she's she's very had this s- lifestyle of how it was supposed to be and then all of a sudden like all this is coming at once like yeah. <laughs> her like revolting and her having an affair just like i think so much on her that she can't even imagine yeah like dealing with it at yeah. all and i gotta say I, I gotta say she's my favorite character on she's the show. fantastic like, she's my favorite mm-hmm. character. she's a I think wonderful she does, actor the actress she's amazing yeah, so yeah. Amazing. she is great and yeah. they, she's evolved so much i'm so i'm really curious like i've said how like it's gonna end this season with how so everyone's really. gonna be and I don't know, hopefully season two. Yeah. Um, but hopefully. 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 Fingers crossed. Right. So Doug got a call um, about, and I heard him say, wait, tonight? Oh, I yeah. thought he was going to ditch her party. Did anyone else think that? Oh, yeah. I did, too. Uh, I thought yeah. that was going to be conflict. Like, he Same. wasn't going to show up at the party, and mm-hmm. then the next episode. We'll I have see. to say, Doug pleasantly surprised me in this episode a lot with how he was with Patty. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. We'll he was talk pretty a, present. Yeah. We'll talk a little more, too, about, like, what, at the end of the episode, their conversation they had, but I yeah. had to talk about that because I just for sure thought he was going to ditch and right after she was so happy that they kind of were like back together right I thought that that was going to be a weird little uh conflict um so then we flash to uh Cindy getting ready for the party in this oh yeah awesome dress and Lenny's it was groovy god what a a, yeah yeah d-i-c-k I know right what a Richard like (laughs) possessive (laughs) Richard yeah (laughs) <laughs> but no, but like he's very possessive of, yeah. apparently, of Cindy. Yeah. He doesn't want like anybody looking at her the way that he does, mm-hmm. or does he's very controlling. Yeah, yeah. it's not good. No, and, and but again, we come back to it like that just was what was the norm. I mean, you can guarantee that his father probably did the same thing to his mom, and she was at home yeah. making sure everything was okay. I mean, it's it's just crazy. To well, see what's that. crazy is. This is awful, but like I've had friends in college that yeah. like their boyfriends get pissed if they're wearing like too revealing of clothes. Yes, it's like I mean, if they're not going out with them, said boyfriend, exactly. Right? Which I mean, it's different because they're not going to sit there and literally be like, "You can't leave until you change" right. or whatever. But, but there will be some attitude. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's, uh-huh. it's crazy yeah. that that. I mean, that's still something that happens. Totally. But um, I didn't realize when he said when he grabbed, like, his tux suit that he was gonna, like, show up to the party. Me neither. Did you guys know that? I, all I wrote down <laughs> was, uh, take off dress. No, he takes sports coat, question mark, question yeah, mark, like, question mark. Because I was like, what's gonna happen but here? I didn't get. She also the, wrote, and, Cindy uh, the, equals alcoholic in all caps. Right? In <laughs> all caps. Really funny, I love it. Right? Thank really you funny. for reading my notes, because, <laughs> yes. My notes are hilarious. My notes are like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, what? <laughs> what? Yeah. Um, so, before everyone else shows up to the party, we see that Nora is back. Yes. Yeah. Grace Gummer, she's so good. She's so good. good. And everything in this season. Yeah, she's amazing. amazing. And 
I guess she's kind of talking to Patty and she tells Patty, hey, if you write a story, I will pass it along uh, to, where is she working now? I don't remember. Some, whatever she's a working. Yeah. And yeah, she's like, I'll pass it along to my editor. Um, and so Patty's in her mind trying to come up with a story. Uh, and she she gives a couple ideas to Nora. And Nora's like, you're better than that. Yeah. You know, because yeah. she talks about like dinner parties. She's right. like, you're better than that. Come yeah. on. And yeah. mm-hmm. so that's kind of something that now is in Patty's mind that she has Nora trying to help her out. Mm-hmm. And then also, Jane ditches her meaning which i was so happy about me too yeah. i was so glad i love seeing jane like just let loose yeah. it's so fun to see her um so we'll talk about the little party now i have written in all caps jane and sam oh my gosh they're in love like they <laughs> are you guys when they were playing that game but oh, you don't think flirting hardcore yeah. hardcore oh yeah you don't think that the military homie is gonna move in though. He oh, totally Noah? is. Noah, Noah totally is. That look, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I think Sam. Okay, this. So they're playing this weird game. I don't. Know. I don't even know what the game I is. I don't even. Me yeah. neither. We couldn't it's get it. It's a blindfold, and you're yelling. Yeah. I, I blindfold <laughs> yelling. I tried to understand the game, but I just yeah. gave up. But I did notice that when Jane volunteered to play, she was looking at Sam as if like, Sam, let's play. Oh yeah. And but then, then he Noah didn't... gave a yeah. look. Yeah. And then Sam looked at Noah because he knew the look, and I was like, oh my god. Yeah, drama. What is happening? And then the guy was like, "Who is that? Who is that guy again um, with the bow tie always?" Um, Gabe. 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 And then Gabe, Gabe. volunteers <laughs> Noah to do it, yes. and yes. then he gets in. Yes. Mm. And then, but I don't know. Jane and Sam, they like need to happen. I don't think it's gonna happen this season. I think that they're gonna keep it like this, like little tension. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they are so. I swear they're in love, and they're dancing together, and. They just, I think they were, like I said, they respect each other right. on work level, on personal level. level. So I think that. I, I feel know. like it was the neighbor, though, the guy who invited her to the Almond Brothers band was the one to, like, push her to to go to that party, though. Like, because he was the one, I feel like they're definitely not in love, but he was giving her attention that she's like, I want to be getting that from Sam. And yeah. he told her, he yeah. told her, you know, you're a cool girl. And I think right? that was, like, and a then, revelation oh God, for her. Her face, yeah. her face was like, I am a cool girl. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she's like, going to the party. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. I That's love her. Sometimes she just needs those little boosts. A little pickup. We yeah. love her. Some reassurance. Yes, reassurance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so then we have, I don't know, did I don't know if I got this out of order, but whatever, we'll talk about this first. So Doug uh, talks with Patty about being late, and he kind of says that they want him to write a book about the Black Panthers. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and Do that it. he wants to yeah. be the author. And, and Patty, I guess, I mean, understandably, she kind of has mixed feelings about this, because I'm sure in her head she goes, it should be me writing, writing this book. book. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I thought that this was good because, first of all, he wanted to include her mm-hmm. right away. Second, I thought it was good that it it sparked her to open up about, you know, I want to be a reporter. Mm-hmm. And then, this is what Doug pleasantly surprised me for. He goes, I want to help you do everything you want to do. Yeah. And I think that this was kind of a, like a light went off in Patty's head because... And Jane made a good point about this too that these girls never really straight up asked. Yeah. To yeah. Write. Jane made a really good point about that. She made a really yeah. good point about it. And that happened next episode, so we'll really yeah. dive in. But yeah, so I think Patty was almost surprised that Doug was so. Will- I Open. think she was scared that her saying that was him going to be pushing away and yeah. almost make it easier for her to do this lawsuit and all this stuff. But the fact that he. Is so willing to help her. Yeah, it gives us yeah. Second, it gives you second thoughts. Like yes. now, sh- well, what if we just ask? You yep. know what I mean? yep. Like, what mm-hmm. would happen if we asked to really do it? Because we only saw really uh, Nora earlier yeah. really push to do something, and then she ended up having to but leave. In yeah, that then, though, she did it secretively. She still, I, yeah. I know that like Wick and their reactions was sh- like super not good. But yeah. she did do it. I mean, it's very different than just straight up asking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which who knows? She could have just been turned down anyway. But technically, she still went around. Yeah. Yeah. So Sneaking. I don't know. It definitely makes you yeah. think. Yeah. It makes you think. Um, party gets weird real quick. Yeah. Because Cindy's hammered, oh, man. and Lenny is like anti-war. Uh, <laughs> this was so uncomfortable. Rough. I felt. Well, I don't want to say I felt bad for Lenny, but to be I did the, for a the, second. The the. the you know, oppos- opposing force mm-hmm. in this, and everyone's against him. I, yeah. I mean, like, I can find it. It's like, yeah, he, it was the, he had some points, but like, it was the way he said it. You, it was a judgmental. You know thing. what it reminded mm-hmm. me of when he's talking about being anti war? Because he expressly comes out and says, you know, I'm 
anti-war, but I'm not anti-troops. It reminded me of the whole Colin Kaepernick thing that was going uh, on. I don't know if you guys really paid yeah. attention to it, but mm-hmm. you know, it was like saying I'm not about uh, I'm not about you know disrespecting the veterans. I'm just about this movement here. And what Lenny kind of was saying, it was kind of was paralleled that you know I'm not against you guys. I'm just against what is going on over there. Yeah. And um, I'm glad that you brought up Colin Kaepernick because this is like the best intro ever because we have one of our great sponsors is DraftKings and that's the reason that we're able Mm -hmm. to bring all this content for free. (laughs) Great, great doc. So DraftKings um, is the destination for one week fantasy football. Uh, That means no season long commitments and never again will injuries have you combing the waiver wire <laughs> i'm so bad whatever um so it's a brand new seasons every week at DraftKings. so you pick your contest draft your team and follow the live action and if you put in the code buzz at draftkings.com you can play for free with your first deposit for which free. is what, 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 for free, what? free. <laughs> my favorite co- make that my money. favorite price ever oh. is yeah. free mm-hmm. um so that's buzz capital b u z z and you can play for free um for your share of over a hundred thousand dollars in total prizes this weekend isn't that that's crazy awesome. and definitely with thanksgiving coming up i feel like that's like football yeah that's football day so and like really. i could yeah. use a hundred thousand dollars oh me too yeah, so if there's money. any time to join DraftKings, it's for i think thanksgiving week i think mm-hmm. that's you know, the best the best time to join. So go to DraftKings.com now and use B-U-Z-Z for free play with your first deposit. Now back you did to the it. Show. You did it. Now back to the show. <laughs> um, so, so Cindy, I kind of felt for Lenny just in the fact that, like, he's in this weird situation where he doesn't know anyone. And even though it's, like, a really crappy relationship, I think he still expected his wife to maybe... Oh, yeah. Be on his side in a totally. sense. And she pretty mm-hmm. much just threw him under the bus. Yeah. Like, it was already an uncomfortable situation that I think he was trying to get out of. Yeah. Um, and she just made it worse. Yeah, and she, then she's icing so unhappy. on the cake. Oh, Could you talk man. about the worst time oh. ever to drop the bomb that you've been, like, messing yeah. around with someone else? In front Rough. of everybody. Everyone. At the workplace. Like, yeah. he can never show up there again. No. Never. Yeah, it was ever. It was bad. And his reaction was bad. Um... It was just a lot of bad. Yeah. His line, Awful. you belong here with the drunks and the bums. Okay, yeah. now he's a big D-bag. He's a <laughs> and then, yeah. but then like, in, that's like, he's a D-bag. We already know that. But in that sense, I think his, emo- I mean, you just find out, even though it's, a, like I said, crappy relationship, you find out that your wife's been cheating on you. Like, I don't even know what could come to your, your mind. You're just going to spit out whatever you're thinking. Just yeah. emotional. Yeah. Um, And then Patty tries to kind of help Cindy and Ned comes in and is like, I'm gonna take her. Yeah. Save the day. I'm gonna take her for the night. <laughs> and now the whole office knows. Yes. That this yeah. is going on. And this know? is a big thing in the next episode. Yeah. Um so I guess okay, so <laughs> so that all chaos happened. I have WTF Gabe in the bath in his underwear with Nora feeding him pancakes. What oh, was that about? Yeah. <laughs> we were. That was weird. <laughs> we didn't know what was going on. Like, cause I don't know. I don't know what's going on with Gabe. Like, what is what is his? Cause he he shows up and then he was gone for a while. Then he comes I back. I don't know. Like. I'm just not sure. <laughs> then I saw him, and we were thinking, are they like hooking up or right. something going on? She hates I Gabe, I yeah. thought. Yeah. But then, like, he's literally just like in Patty's bath, eating pants. Like, it was so <laughs> weird. I don't know. I had to comment on it. Like, I don't think there's much significance to it, but it was worth worth Maybe laughing just about. Showing that like they're friends again. They're on a okay. talking level. Right. Yeah. Well, know. she said the only way I'm gonna ever make you anything, I think, is if you get in the bathtub, probably just in your underwear. I assume that's what the dare was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and that's why he was like sitting there eating. Pa- she stick. She stuck to it. It was just um, bi- it was, okay, it was girl. Bizarre. It was yeah, bizarre. It, it was totally weird. Um. So then this uh, the scene with Jane and uh, Patty. You know, yeah. Jane was smoking mm-hmm. weed, letting loose, God, having fun, dancing. Favorite. Um, Patty meets her out on the stoop thing, mm-hmm. and it's like, and she kind of finds out that Jane ditched this work meeting, and and she's like, "Are you a career girl, Jane?" And Jane's mm-hmm. like, "Maybe I always have been." And yeah. they have this like epiphany moment, and they're like yeah. screaming from the rooftops, yeah. and then Patty thinks it's a great time to be like, "We're filing a lawsuit." Right. Yeah. Were you guys expecting that reaction from Jane? 
Yes, actually, I was. I mean, because we kind of knew that Jane was like going to be one of the more tougher ones to get on mm-hmm. board on the strain. And like even as high as she was, I knew like she she has very firm beliefs and values yeah. and whatnot. And oh, like I I'm glad that she got the ability to speak in the next episode why she was mm-hmm. so against it. But I think it, I was more surprised with Patty telling her so soon in the season. Yeah. I was like, we still have a few more episodes to go. So I thought it was going to be, like, later on. Right. Like, that Jane would be one of the last people they tell. Yeah. yeah. I felt like it was such an intimate moment because Jane said, I'm not having a white wedding, which means she basically admitted, I'm not, I'm no longer a virgin yeah. to Patty, who's and, the hippiest girl mm-hmm. there, yeah. which you know they would, she would not normally tell her that. And the neighborhood, too. Right? Yeah, the neighborhood, <laughs> too. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm like... I don't know. It, Patty was a little bit smart in a sense of that's like an intimate moment. I'd probably swoop in there yeah. and be like, I'm feeling a lawsuit, by the way. I know you're like, you're really feeling really yeah. vulnerable. I'm just going to lay this on you. Uh, so I, I got it. I assumed that that was like a good time to kind of get in there. I was surprised. Um, not because I figured they built this up so long that Jane was kind of like, the one who was going to be the last mm-hmm. to come on. So mm-hmm. I, I figured that there was no way that she could just all of a sudden be on right board. on board. Yeah. We yeah. still got episodes to go. But I I kind of thought that maybe she could because you've been seeing the buildup of her being let down yeah. by yeah. by men, you know what I mean? By her boyfriend, by her dad, you know what I mean? Like wanting to be a career, now she wants to be a career girl. You yeah. think that maybe she would come on board, but I'm glad they kind of held it off a little bit. I'm really glad that they did tell Jane so, like with a couple episodes to go because We'll talk about it a lot in, regarding the next episode, but I really, it's interesting to hear her thoughts on it because it really makes you think. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm excited to talk about that. But the final scene here is, you know, Doug was trying to find Novo 22 yeah. mm-hmm. uh, and ends up getting jumped. And mm. they say, you know, remember what side you're on before you write or whatever, which that was pretty crazy. Yeah. Like, I was, he got it bad. He got a bad beating. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was just surprising from the kind of people who jumped him as well. And I think that's what got him by surprise, too. Mm-hmm. It's like it was white guys that jumped him. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. yeah. So we'll, Scary. Di- we'll dig more into that with yeah. this next episode. So that brings us to episode eight, and that is Expose. Um, so it kind of starts off, Patty's trying... Oh, Patty decided that she was... Get, her, her article that she was going to give to Nora was going to be on, like, this good girl's the revolt. revolt. Yeah. Which, because, you know, she's an insider perspective, you know, she'll get all the good stuff. So she's starting to work on that. Um, you see kind of the ba- everyone's coming in, super hungover from the party. Did, did you guys hear one line that they said when they walk in? One of the guys says, uh, I was lit. Did you, yeah. you hear that? I heard that. Yeah, I did. No, I totally They've been saying lit no, forever. Ever. Oh, oh my God. I heard that thing. Look at us oh thinking God. that like we made thing. lit. That we yeah, made it. No. Like, no. They were saying lit way back That's then. That's so, so funny. Then, like, it's funny you bring that up because I heard it and I thought that, I was like, is this just I like temporary, like contemporary writing oh, just no, no, for no, no, no. that? Or was that an actual legitimate historical thing? Yeah, they used to say like lit like a Christmas tree. That was like one of the things that people would say back then. Like I was That's awesome. on fire. I was that, high. I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. That is Drunk. so awesome. I'm bringing it back. <laughs> um, so yeah, we see everyone kind of coming in, just like hungover, and mm-hmm. had, everyone had a good time. Thought it was so fun. Mm-hmm. And you see Ned walk in with Patty, and he walks kind of right past uh, Cindy. Mm-hmm. And I see, and then Patty goes up to Cindy, and in my head, I just kind of had this bad feeling. Um, oh yeah. I'm oh, like, yeah. she seems now way too happy. She's like, I'm. You know, I admit to my husband, now I can be with Ned and all of this. And yeah. her, let's just, can we, let's just talk about the whole Ned Cindy <laughs> thing real well, quick. We'll a, just yeah. dive into that. So you see her at the beginning. It was so, it was hard to watch when she went in and just tried to have this conversation with him, trying to get to know him because she was pulling teeth and she, it didn't seem like she realized that he was really not talking to yeah. her. Mm-hmm. And my heart kind of started to hurt for her because she's in this awful like vulnerable position and you know she just told her husband and she thinks that now she thinks she's staying with ned yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. and she thinks he's she's making him dinner she's ordering pork chops and what what were your thoughts on all this because clearly obviously ned ends up saying like hey i thought we were just having fun like we're not on the same page here what do you guys think of him do you think he's in the wrong at all do you think she just had too high of expectations or what do you guys think well, it's like, well, you go. Yeah. Oh, well, I, I'm like, I was actually surprised that Ned was starting to give the cold shoulder, but like once he spoke, 
it makes sense of why he's acting the way he was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's still married. She's right. the one who's legitimately cheating. I wouldn't want to be the one, like, the mistress or the, you know, the, the, the other person in that relationship. So, like, I understand that Ned... Apparently, he is the good guy. He's like, I don't want to be that person. Mm -hmm. Like, I, we're having fun, and I was like, I understand where he's coming from. Um, it still shows that he still cares for her, so, like, I, I'm glad of that. But it's also, I feel bad for Cindy because, again, she doesn't know how to truly be by herself. Yeah. And in fairness, they never really had the talk of where they are in their relationship mm -hmm. or, or the DTR, the define the relationship. Yeah. Like, we That's don't know DTR. what they are. I, didn't know I know, I was like, okay. what like, is happening? They DTR? haven't had that conversation of like what they're actually doing together. Yeah. No, no that's true. I, yeah. Go on. I, uh, you know what? From my perspective on it, I feel like I'm sad for Cindy because mm -hmm. I'm sad for her because, like you said, she doesn't know how to be alone. Like, you know, and this happens to tons of people, not I mean, not just women, men as well, who don't know how to be by themselves. Mm -hmm. And if they've only ever known relationships, as soon as something else comes along that sort of is symbolic of a relationship, they're going to gravitate towards that and try to hold on to it as much as they can. And you see her doing that. And it's like, you know, Ned is... I mean, it looks like Ned has done this before, you know, been, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. been around and, you know, was a party guy. He's having fun and whatever. And for her, this is all brand new and so brand new. She doesn't want it to go away. So she's gripping so hard. Like you said a little earlier, she's a little thirsty. You know what yeah. I mean? Like she's yeah. never had this. She, has. she hasn't drank from this well. So yeah. she's really yeah. thirsty for it. And it, it's just tough to watch. But. It's interesting to watch. Yeah, and in so regards sad. to her, you know, it's so true that she she doesn't know how to be alone because we see at the end of the episode she's going to pack up some stuff and she thinks that Lenny is not going to be there. Right. And he is. And I have to say, I did think I don't like Lenny, but he did seem genuine in the fact where he goes, you never told me you weren't happy. I agree. Like, yeah, he was treating a certain way, but back then that's probably how a lot of husbands were. It was the norm. Yeah. It mm -hmm. was the norm. She never spoke up. She never said... What if I don't want to work for just, you know what I mean? So it's, yeah. I kind of, I never saw his perspective mm -hmm. until that moment yeah. when he said, I didn't know you were that unhappy. Because yeah. it's true. It's it's in the same, I guess, well, after this, we'll talk about the girls that just never asked. It's, you never told, It's but I think it's part of that they feel like they can't. Yeah. Right. So, the, it's, it's, so it's like, I mean, yeah. but Ned did oppression. ask her. You know what I yeah. mean? Like Lenny never Asked. never had a conversation exactly. with her and Ned always did. Mm -hmm. And she was always so obsessed with like writing her story. And she never had a story. In her head, it was just like, I live with my family, I go and I got married. Mm -hmm. But that's what I think what got her so excited about Ned is that it was like a story that she was involved with versus mm -hmm. yeah. like, oh, I'm just put into the story because this is how it goes here and now. Like you just grow up, you get married, you're supposed to be happy with some random dude for yeah. forever. Yeah. I'm glad you guys said that because we thought the same thing. Well, uh, my girl was like, oh, don't stay. Don't stay with him. You know, leave him, whatever. Yeah. But you've got to think of it also from yeah. his perspective. Like, you know, he said, I didn't know you felt this way. Mm -hmm. And he got cheated on. We don't know if he was cheating. I mean, he was not a great person uh, in yeah. the relationship. But right. we don't know if he was stepping out of that relationship. And so now she needed to stay there and, and try to talk yeah. and have a discussion and really for the first time talk about it instead of just running away you know what i mean yeah. i really felt like now we'll see what happens if they can if something can grow from there and, yeah. And yeah maybe he realized the error of his ways yeah and maybe i mean maybe this is what they needed i don't know i'm curious to where this is gonna go because yeah. it's safe to say like ned's out of the picture with that i don't yeah. think that they're oh, gonna yeah. be He's like, like peace out i think he knew exactly what he was doing I in, in my opinion i'm like no you knew what what was going to happen she would fall for you because she's never experienced what you've given her yeah before mm -hmm. and then you knew that you could leave her because she's married yeah like it's such an easy simple situation and it does paint him as like kind of a dick but it, it is what it is richard. you know He's a richard richard yes yeah, yeah, because i'm all <laughs> you know what i'm saying um uh, <laughs> let's dive in a little bit so you know patty and cindy both try to talk to jane and i really really actually like what jane is saying in regards to why she doesn't want to be a part of this she's like you never ask to mm -hmm. write um she goes i don't bite the hand that feeds me i'm going to work hard and when the time is right i'm going to ask for advancement yeah. i agree because mm -hmm. right now yeah the the company says that that's not allowed but she's she made a good point too that wick's no longer there she goes now our boss is someone who's changing with the times and i think she makes cindy and patty kind of like think like really? whoa yeah because here's doug letting in this episode letting cindy take over the novo story and I think when he gave her that story, too, it also made her think of what Jane said. Right. 
You mean letting Patty take letting over Patty, the yes, my, yes, I'm sorry. Yes, yes, yes. No, it's But fine. yeah, it's like these little things are happening that I right. think is going to make them question, whoa, we never just asked. We never... Yeah. Well, well, she well, said it's also oh, not yeah. not just about asking, but like I don't think they were ever given the opportunity to just speak up for themselves, mm-hmm. right? Well, so. she said straight to Cindy, she's like, "Men aren't the enemy. You can talk to them, maybe even your husband." And I was like, "Oh snap!" I she's know. like laying it down, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Which I was like, "That's all of it is really good advice. Everything that she said, I totally agreed with, and I didn't think that I would because I'm on the other girl's revolting side. I know. Yeah. So yeah, I liked it and a lot. So Jane too, uh, in regards to her asking, she goes off with Gregory to this art show, this private art show. Mm -hmm. Um, On the way, they saw these, this like march going. So I had a feeling that that was gonna come into topic when Mm -hmm. they were talking. And and she brings up that she thinks she could do a good piece on that uh, because she'd get better perspectives um, that guys couldn't get. And he pretty much just is like, I can talk to Finn if you want. Who knows if this is gonna happen. Then, what the F? He, he just, showed her. He his drops his traps. Yeah. Yeah. He shows his Richard. <laughs> and that was, I, mm-hmm. I honestly was mm-hmm. just like, whoa. First of all, like, whoa, yeah. there it is. Then, like, I, I, yeah, no, <laughs> I, don't I was know. very, I was very surprised too because not 20 minutes before the audience just saw Jane give a compliment about Greg and speak yes. highly of him, and then he does this to her, which can actually be considered sexual harassment. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, it is. I'm 100%. like, oh, I wonder where, and I, and I was just thinking throughout this episode watching, I was like, there has to be a moment where Jane like will make her change her mind. I was like, this could be it. Yeah. This could be the reason why she might stand up against men yeah. if men think that they can do stuff like this and get away with it. Yeah. And they did. I mean, they, like, did. Yeah. they did. This was the, this. I mean, just imagine how comfortable he had to be to be like, yeah, I can do this right now and it's nothing, you know? Like, yeah, he was laughing and yeah. he just turned crazy. around. He was like, yep. And then he sent her the painting as if nothing happened. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking, that's what I said. I go, maybe this is what's going to make Jane kind of see like more of the issue isn't just about the writing, but how that they're just like not respected. The women aren't respected in mm-hmm. a sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like there's a memo where it's like whip it out, send painting, and I guarantee you he's done that like <laughs> way, more than, yeah. after, may, after, way more than yeah, way more than five it's times, so right? Weird. <laughs> whip uh, it out, send painting. I want to touch just quickly on just I I don't think I mean Patty writing the Novo story I I don't think it was as I mean it was part of the storyline but I but I want to just quickly touch on just the Doug and Patty stuff so oh, that we totally. can because I, I want to talk to you about your experience on the show and stuff mm-hmm. and we don't have much more time so pretty much just Doug. He's gung ho that it's the cops who did this, and he's not about to let it go. Totally. Uh, Finn's a little questionable about it. He's like, you know, let's find something that we can actually print. But I, I think that we're going to see a lot more of Doug digging into this and not letting it go, which good for him. Yeah. yeah. Um, so mm-hmm. I think that'll be interesting. And then uh, Patty, Doug kind of tells Patty that she missed the complete story. Which yeah. did you guys agree with this? I, I kind of, I, I don't know. No, I, like, I, I didn't really like this because it, now it seems like yeah, Doug gave her free range, quote unquote, on the story. But it seems like he's still trying to control the story, be like, no, change it because it needs mm-hmm. to have X, Y, and Z in it. Even though he's not writing it, mm-hmm. he's still making her say everything that he would want in yeah. the story. Right. And like that's not really letting her tell the story. Yeah. Right. I, I still felt like she did miss the story, though, because he was saying how New York, like, in the foster care system, how does this girl get to do this? Yeah. It's, it's, it's a story about New York and the, the foster system and how the city is messed up failing. and crumbling and failing this one child, which I'm sure there's more than one out there, yeah. versus... This is what she does, Novo 22, 22 exactly. foster homes. Like, this is about her. It's about a bigger picture. I know. That's why mm-hmm. I agreed with Doug in that sense. I think she wrote more of just, like, a personal piece on, like, an artist, mm-hmm. whereas what they're trying to do is, like, investigative reporting. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's where she missed the mark. And I think it was good. I think she'll learn from that. That's the thing. Like, mm-hmm. I, when I was watching that, I felt like he was giving her real reporter critique. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's how, this is what is going to happen to you writing these stories. You're going to have somebody telling you, no, you missed it, do it again, or we just won't run your yeah. story. You know what I mean? And like, it's a real world experience for it. And it's yeah. really good. I didn't take it yeah. as him being a Richard. I thought that he was just <laughs> no. trying to help her out. Yeah. The last, the last scene real quick is, so Finn gives Patty two jazz tickets, knew she was oh, going to ask him. My God. Yeah. Oh, totally. Foreshadow. Yeah. 
shiz is going down. I, but I kind of thought it might. I, I, I was thinking maybe she'd just take it and go with Doug. I thought that a little oh, bit. And I then she gave no, 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 no. Like, oh. Because even at the beginning of the episode, the first thing that Finn says to Patty was like, what kind of music did you play? Yep. And they were bonding over the type of music that they enjoyed. And then it came back full circle at the end. Like, here's yeah. music that I think you'll enjoy. Take someone who'll appreciate right. it. Because yeah. they know they bond on the same type of well, music. Well, and he was like, sometimes you break my heart. And she was just like, they, well, it's gonna go down. Thing. It's gonna go oh down. My I don't God. know. Okay, let's talk about you. Let's talk about me. Thank you. Uh, this yeah. is great. I'm, I'm yeah. glad to be here. Thanks I'm for so having excited. Me. Yeah. It's fantastic. Um, so first, just tell about your experience on the show, your character, what it was like. Like, um, give us a rundown. Well, <laughs> I played Keith in episode three, Futures. Um, I play the leader of the Black Panthers. You're they, great. Thank you so much. Oh, you're great. Uh, <laughs> Doug comes to you know after. Patty kind of brings up the whole Black Panthers yeah. and uh, the FBI, you know, inflating numbers and things like that. Doug comes to talk to me. And it was so cool. Uh, this episode was written by Darlene Hunt, who is an amazing writer. Uh, and, you know, the showrunners, Darlene Hunt and Dana Calvo. Um, I was so enthralled with playing this character, especially now. You know what I mean? Like, the period that we're in right now, to be able to talk about inequality and you know social justices that aren't happening across the world we can see that right now it was happening in the 60s it's still happening to today mm -hmm. and it was so cool to embody this character the black panthers and what they stood for and and give a voice to things that happened in the past it was it was just fun uh, hunter parish was amazing to work with i mean they didn't you know you do episodes of tv and you're always afraid of the editing the cutting room floor mm -hmm, and being mm -hmm. edited out. And I was on a show a couple, you know, weeks ago that they edited down everything that we did. Mm -hmm. But they didn't edit anything mm -hmm. here. They let, you know, Scott Winant was the director. Um, he just let it run. And it was so fun. I got to take my time. I had such a good time with it. And I love the show. Like, I'm pulling for it because they keep talking about the Panthers. Mm -hmm. I'm, I just, you know, the book... Doug's got to come back and talk to somebody about this yeah. book, right? Yeah. That would be so great. I was yeah, actually just great. thinking yeah. that. <laughs> it would be great. You know? No, I was thinking that about your character, actually, because um, that has been one cons like consistent, um, like, story that they are following. Yeah. Uh, some mm -hmm. of these stories that they'll come in, like, the postal thing. Like, come and go. We heard it, yeah. that episode, and that's it. So, I... Maybe yeah. I can yeah. see you sneaking you back. Know. Keith, Keith coming back. Keith, come on back. You know, let's uh, let's bring him in. Let's do some Panther stuff. Maybe you know what? Maybe they need a certain Black Panther to become a writer. There. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Maybe I can write stories about you know right. writers, black stuff. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? But, yeah, it, would be, it would be really cool. But it was really a really fun experience. Really great. And you know, I, I stay in touch with the writer and the creator, and you know, through social media and. It was just an amazing thing to do. That is really awesome. Yeah. And do you have any other upcoming things that people can keep an eye out for you? Um, Anything in the works? Just on demand, go watch, uh, you know, uh, what is that? This Is Us. I'm um, on episode <gasps> five of uh, This Is show. Us. What? I played Shooter, um, Chris Sullivan's best friend. And then you guys ah. see that when Chrissy uh, comes over to the house oh, to watch football. Yes. Oh, my and, uh, Shut out. the front you. door. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, oh, you yeah. are oh, the annoying guy. I am the annoying guy. Get out of here. Playing, I'm trying to watch football, watching with watching my football. dead dad. Yeah, watching football. Playing and, um, Draft Kings at the same time. Yeah. Yes, yes. Draft Kings. You. Free. $100,000. Oh, my gosh. Um, I can't believe that was you. Yeah, oh yeah. It was me. And uh, Bosch, so season three coming up. I'm in a few episodes of that. And so, you know. Awesome. It's going. It's going. And hopefully we get another season of Good Girls Revolt. Yes, season two. Bring it on, yes. please. More Black All right, Panthers. real quickly, let's just do each go through our predictions, and oh then we'll gosh. wrap out. Oh my goodness. Oh man. Well, like I said, your oh, After right. Buzz TV <laughs> prediction. Oh, okay. Build it up. Okay, but I think I said this before: is that I think somebody's going to end up pregnant, but not by the guy that they're supposed, supposed to get to. pregnant by. And I believe that Ned. it could either be, yeah, Cindy is going to get Pragers, um, or possibly Patty, because I think that she might end up like sleeping maybe with somebody and it might not be she did sleep with the neighbor so she might find out soon one of those two I think it's still going to be that's my thing great mm -hmm. I think uh, another incident is going to happen to Jane now like a disrespectful uh, incident from a, another guy then I think that'll send her over the edge to join the EOCC yes okay. I'm Good. just going to agree with you guys because I we agree. are out of time because yeah. we just have been talking it's been <laughs> such a great chat. show Thank you all so much for watching. We have only one week left, which is so, so sad, but we want to hear from you guys. So follow on all social media, AfterBuzz TV, iTunes, 
like us on YouTube, comment, and if you want to continue the discussion, you can find me, Abby Vega, at underscore Abby Vega on Twitter and Instagram. Where can they find you guys? You can follow me on Twitter at Serafini TV. And you guys can find me on Twitter at the Tara Erickson. And, we'll and find me on Twitter at Reggie Watkins Jr. Awesome. Yay. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you, you next week. Thank you for joining us. Peace. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later! later. The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.